This video is supported by patrons like you. If you'd like to become a patron, please head over to patreon.com forward slash Matt Jarbo. Just a dollar per month is a great way to say F you to the access media. You know, I'll be the first one to admit when two years ago was announced that Disney was going to be purchasing Fox or at least looking into purchasing Fox. I was ecstatic. And for the most part, I still relatively am. There's a lot there that I think is going to ultimately be good uh, for X-Men and for other Fox properties. But at the end of the day, uh, Disney forked out $71.3 billion for everything, which means that they are going to want to find a way to maximize profits and get back that money as soon as humanly possible. Now, it will take them literal decades to be able to do that, but I do ultimately feel that they will be able to pull that off at some point in time. Iger is going to set it up in order to create a system at play that allows them to maximize profits based upon these Fox movies. But there's always that downside. And when it comes to Disney being Disney, there's one thing they're very good at, and that is creating profit via scarcity. And that's why we're seeing articles like this today on Cinema Blend. Uh, wait, uh, is Disney putting Fox movies into the vault? Now, the article itself goes on to describe how many outlets, many, many theaters uh, have been denied requests to screen older Fox movies. Now, if you have if you don't know this in, in a lot of theaters like second run theaters or things like that, they will try to work deals with movie studios to basically run screens of older, more cult hit favorites as a way to bring in people to see a movie, to charge a little bit more, and everyone makes a little bit of money. And oftentimes studios will rent this, you know, will license them the print, will rent them the print for dirt cheap. And so it's more of an active win for the theater than it is for the studio. But the studio then gets some reinvigorated interest in a certain area for a movie, and that might lead to future sales of Blu-rays or DVDs or things along those lines. So ultimately, at the end of the day, Everybody wins, but it's not a great deal of money. When I used to work at the theater that th this channel is based on, the Regency Academy 6 in Pasadena, California, we used to do this every single weekend. We would do a, a cult movie on Saturday nights, and it was always a lot of fun, prim primarily because my job on Friday nights was to watch the movie and to make sure that the, that the, that the print was put together properly. So it was a great job. And so I have a certain affinity for these types of screenings because I got to sit there and I got to watch Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, Child's Play, The Warriors, Evil Dead 2, Hard Day's Night, an original 1985 print of Back to the Future, Shaun of the Dead, tons and tons and tons of movies. I got to sit there and watch and be paid to watch them. So I personally love going to these types of screenings. But we're finding out now that Fox movies have suddenly been denied access. There's no other real explanation for this than Disney is putting these particular things back in the vault. They're putting these titles in their new vault because they want to develop scarcity. They don't want people to go to the theater to go and see the movie. They want people to pay for a Disney Plus or Hulu membership in order to then stream it online. And or they want to basically figure out a way to re-release some of these hits like Alien or Die Hard or whatever. Uh, in a way that is going to come out like, oh, we're going to do this anniversary release. So we're going to do this new 4K release. So we're going to do something that they can put out there in a new case, in a new steel box, in a new tin or whatever, and then create scarcity, limited time only, pick up your copy of the 45th anniversary of Alien, yada, 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 yada. And then they, they, they're they able to then get into the collector market, which ultimately might turn out more income. Then people who are just going to go see it one night at a small theater for five bucks, you know, so there's there's a reason for it. But I, I. I'm not a fan of that reason, to be fair, I'm not a fan of that reason at all, because I feel that it's counterproductive. It's it's counterintuitive to what Disney's trying to do now. They'll argue or other people will argue that they clearly know more than me, that I'm just a, a humble movie pundit on the Internet. Right. And that's it. Uh, and. You know, they, they clearly understand the business. But when I think of these kind of movies, when I think of Die Hard, I own Die Hard on DVD. I own it on VHS. I own it on Blu-ray. I will own it in 4K when I finally get around to buying it or they finally release a full set. I will pick it up in whatever format is available because it's Die Hard and generally it just tends to get better over time, which is the whole point of why I keep rebuying a lot of the stuff. And I'm not the only one. A lot of us do this. 
But if they were doing a one night only screening of the movie in theaters, because I'm such a big fan of the cinematic experience, I would still go and see the movie in theaters and still buy a copy of it when it comes out. What I what I feel that Disney is doing is they're 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 looking at a certain market and they're trying to just ignore that market. And that market are people who enjoy going to the theater. And since these movies make the vast majority of their money at the theater, you think that trying to preserve or at least extend the cinematic experience of some of these types of films would be better in the long run. That they would go and they would be able to market to the people who are the ones who would be willing to go and see the movie in theater again. Now, Disney would still get some money out of the deal, not a lot of money. I think like I think when when we were doing it at the theater, I was told like Warner Brothers would license a movie for like a hundred and fifty bucks or something. It was a really cheap fee, you know, because it was a it just it was a really, really, really cheap fee. And so obviously that's not a lot of money, but they understand that the people that go and see it are the people that are then going to go and tell their friends, oh my God, I just went and saw this Warner Brothers movie. Like, let's say, uh, I think, um, uh, was is it, uh, what's a good Warner, Warner's I can think of here. Like, I, I, whatever, Universal. I saw, I saw Back to the Future in theaters. Okay, I saw Back to the Future in original print. Forgot how much, how much I love that movie. I went out to the store and I bought the Blu-ray set again so I can go home and watch all three of them. But man, if they bring Back to the Future to the theaters, I'm so going to go watch that because I love that movie too. And then they want to take their friends. And then their friends want to take their friends. And this is how word of mouth marketing works. Disney doesn't need word of mouth marketing because they make so much damn money. Um, but word of mouth marketing does negatively impact them. I would say, especially with uh, maybe uh, Solo or perhaps, um, uh, you know, Galaxy's Edge has had a bit of trouble with that. You know, uh, people haven't really been as excited for those. So that those both kind of tended to falter a little bit. So you figured that they would want to, to work on something that's more of a positive by licensing these movies out. But no, they really want to focus you on trying to get to get you to get me to spend, you know, what is it? Six, seven bucks a month for a Disney plus subscription service or a Hulu service, a subscription service where these movies might find themselves at some point going. And I get it, but I feel like they're alienating an audience of people that fundamentally are the ones who are going to keep coming back to the well, you know, and just going after a subscription service in the end might yield more money. I mean, you figure, you know, the average cost of a Netflix account is like $12. And there are 100 million people in the United States who have Netflix accounts. So if that's 100 million times 12. So 120, uh, you know, or no, that's $1.2 billion a month in revenue that Netflix pulls in just from the United States. Now, that over the course of of a year is an insane amount of money. And that at the end of the day, I mean, there's operating expenses and things like that that are clearly gonna whittle that down. But at the end of the day, it's still wildly, vastly profitable, more profitable than, than licensing these movies out and putting them in theaters. But the, but the, but the cost of that, the, the any of the cost of that, it's just, it's not even a drop in the bucket. It's just, it's just like mist. It's just mist. It's it's vapor. It doesn't it doesn't mean anything in the long run, but it still shows that you're not going to sit there and like shove theaters out of the equation and theaters. Again, they need money. They need to preserve the, the experience. And I think other studios get that. But Disney operates on scarcity and it uses that scarcity to kind of nostalgic guilt you into paying for things you probably already own, but they just give it to you in a shiny new package. I mean, they're basically like Nintendo. Nintendo is really good at doing that, too. Uh, but it's unfortunate. And I really think I really would love for them to rethink their entire campaign here, because at the end of the day, film fans are film fans and cinephiles go to the theater and they continue go to the theater and they spend a lot of their money at the theater. And if Disney worked with them, they'd all make a lot more money. And uh, at the end of the day, isn't that what they're in business for? I don't know. You guys tell me your thoughts, your opinions. Let me know down in the comments below. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day. Thanks for watching. And thank you for supporting the channel on Patreon. Really appreciate the new patrons we've gotten this week. And uh, have a great day and peace out.